And a pleasant good afternoon to you and yours. It is the Matt Murphy Radio Show. You see, that callback right there, that callback right there is a demonstration why when you miss a moment, you miss a lot of the Matt Murphy Show. That callback. It's why we do it. To encourage you to listen for every moment between noon and three on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. To almost make you jealous, in a sense, that you missed certain portions of the broadcast from day to day. But I do have some brand new information regarding that conversation. Brand new information regarding that conversation. And I'll get to said information in just a moment on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It is 12.06. Good afternoon. Welcome in. Hope you're well. Um, it is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. It's episode 537 of our proceedings today. Hope your brackets are intact and, and hope you... Um, Hope you have a good time watching the basketball over the course of the weekend. We will not be speaking much of it or about much of it on the show today as we have, frankly, more important things to do. Um, obviously, by now, you've heard the news here on Super Talk 99.7 WTN and on a variety of other different platforms uh, that they have found the body of Riley Strain. We will discuss. Before we get into the serious matters, let me get the pleasantries out of the way and we'll get things lumbering under our own weight. By the way, the new information that I have in Belkay, I have brand new breaking news regarding that discussion about your emotional support Cobra. I've done a little bit of my own investigative research, and I'm being told that you are misrepresenting this story. That is, it's in fact a green snake that you have in your possession, not a Cobra. Well, would you like to respond to these I new developments? I stand by what I said. That's all I got to say is I stand by what I said. Uh, other people don't own my Cobra, so they don't know as much as I do, so they can uh, they can be silent. Look, fair enough. Look, I'm, I'm just a man reporting the news. I'm not in it. My name's not Bennett. So y'all can hash it out. All I know is that I have reliable sources relating to me that the suggestion of a Cobra anywhere on your person is wildly exaggerated. I, I would say that uh, your sources would be incorrect. Okay. All right, fair enough. Fair, I trust you. I trust you. You're the man behind the glass pushing the buttons and making sure that everything that comes out of our speakers sounds as good as humanly possible. All right, 615-737-9986. Particularly on a First Amendment Freestyle Friday, we invite you to be a part of the show. Starting at 105 this afternoon, we'll crank up Fry J. Lots to discuss regarding the New York City case against Donald Trump. More on that coming up in just a few moments. Uh, we're also looking at the commemoration of Covenant. Um, I mentioned this on the show yesterday, and I mentioned it again today. The Covenant School anniversary is coming up next week. We'll tell you about some of the activities expected. Um, and sadly, they have become partisan in nature. And I hate that. I hate that we have to do it that way. I don't want to do it that way. But that seems to be the way that some have decided that it must go. Um, I will tell you in a few moments about my decision that if I ever go to prison, I am 100% female. If I ever go to prison, I am 100% female. And this is in relation to a story that I read out of Washington State as to how many men have decided that they are women and are being transported to the female prison as a result. And all you really have to do is say it. And they'll believe it. It's a matter of law in the state of California. And I had no idea. So we'll deal with that today as the show moves forward. There's an invasion at the southern border. By now, you have no doubt if you are following the news. You've probably seen in, uh, in Texas that illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, call them whatever you want. Uh, invaders, I think, is a fair assessment as to what is happening. Invasion is a fair word to tell you what is happening. They have now overwhelmed the Texas National Guard and breached the border fence. And we're about to have a White House briefing, the first since the migrant border rush occurred. And I am predispositioned to go live to that. I don't normally do it. But I want to know what the lion Corrine Jean-Pierre has to say about this. And what does Joe Biden have to say about this? And I've got other developments on this front. If you don't believe, you know, this is not, this is no longer a partisan issue, man. It's an American issue. It's an issue of whether or not you want to have a country. And I have been as emphatic as anyone on radio for years about this matter. 
Joe Biden is no, is no longer simply not doing his job. He's actively working against, and, I, and any time, and I try to remind you with regularity about this, any time I say Joe Biden is doing this or Joe Biden is doing that, just walk back to my monologue from yesterday when I started the show, when I explained to you that Joe Biden's making no decisions, and no one believes that Joe Biden is making any decisions. So when we say Joe Biden this or Joe Biden that, obviously understand that it's the people behind the throne that are making the decisions. Joe Biden is just a sad, bumbling fool who has spent his entire life sucking off the government and the taxpayer dollar, okay? Joe Biden is no longer just not doing his job. He's actively working against those people that are trying to do the job that he refuses to do. As a matter of fact, his administration failed to file paperwork in 200,000 separate deportation cases that are now being dismissed as a result of his failure. As the report states, with so many people pushing President Joe Biden to do more with the ongoing border crisis in the United States of America, his administration now has made what, are, what some are coming, calling the biggest blunder per Daily Wire. The Department of Homeland Security failed to apply a notice to appear on over 200,000 pending cases of deportation for illegal aliens. As a result, all of those cases have been dismissed. And the suspects are just free to go into the country. So not only do they refuse to actively push back against these individuals. When they do push back against these individuals, they do it so poorly and ineffectively that they have to let them go. We're going to cover more of that in just a moment. Uh, 5969, the show starts at noon. I mentioned that they found Riley Strain's body right at the beginning of the show. I, I don't know. We're going to talk about that. Thank you uh, for the update. Um, and I, I do appreciate it on the Members Nutrition Super Text line. Um, I'm getting admonished for not mentioning that, but I mentioned it five minutes ago. Uh, but, yes, they did find Riley Strain's body. Have you mentioned they, that Trump lost the election? I have. Uh, one, not today. Not what well, I haven't today. I'm sorry. Oh. You're right. Thank you, Bill. Well, I, I didn't know. I just I hadn't heard you say anything, so I was checking. No, I I appreciate fifty nine sixty nine. Um, I have um, I actually mentioned this to Pamela Fur, and and you can't not appreciate people that are trying to help you out. Uh, but I have had I've been inundated with text messages for the last three hours uh, regarding the discovery of Riley Strain's body uh, in the Cumberland River. Uh, it was the most anticipated outcome. It is a sad outcome. But it's the most anticipated outcome of this situation. We're going to delve into that in just a moment on Super Talk 99.7 WTN and ask you the question. It's a First Amendment Freestyle Friday after all. Whether you want to join in on the Members Nutrition Super Text line or on the telephone lines at 615-737-9986. What, if anything, should be done? What, if anything, should be changed? I would suggest to you that nothing should be done. Specific to the case of Riley Strain. I would suggest to you that nothing should be done. And I know for those of you whose heart goes out to the Strain family, for those of you who look at this case, as most of us do, and just, just shake your head with sadness for him, first and foremost, and sadness for the circumstances that came together that led to his death, you're thinking, whoa, Murphy. You're saying nothing should be done about this? That's what I'm saying. And I think, I think we have a tendency of overreacting to situations like this. And I'll, I'll delve into that coming up in just a moment. Yes, sir? One of the more draining elements for me personally with this is that now we've been left with just having to hope that there was no foul play. And that doesn't do anything to make his death any less tragic. Now, I, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. And I'm curious what people think about that. I mean, it's pure speculation on all of our parts. I don't mean to rubberneck the accident or rubberneck the incident. I don't even want to call it an accident because I don't want to characterize it in that way. But you're right. 
I don't know that we'll ever definitively know. But I have a strong lean on what I think happened. And I'm, I'm certain that others do as well. And it's time to talk about that. And what, if anything, should be done. I'm going to make the case that with the set of circumstances, as we understand the set of circumstances, maybe this leads us to a few conclusions. And maybe it leads us to a few things that we can do with regard to what's going on down there at the Cumberland River. I heard someone this way, put it this way. I heard someone this morning suggest that we need to fence that area of the Cumberland River. And I think it's ridiculous. I think that's absurd. I know that it's painful. I know that it hurts. I know that there are plenty of points as we look back on this hindsight being 2020 where we could point to decisions being made that ultimately led to his loss of life. But we cannot allow the emotions of the moment to overwhelm us to the point that we make decisions from our emotions rather than rationally thinking through this and recognizing it as what I believe it to be, a tragic series of circumstances that led to a tragic accidental death. But it has made national news for good reason, because it is a rarity. And that's something that you need to focus on. 615-737-9986. Before we get into that, however, we're going to take a quick time out. And before we take a quick time out, I remind you uh, that it is First Amendment Freestyle Friday. We appreciate you. We appreciate you listening on 99.7. That's the radio dial. We appreciate you listening perhaps on your app. Maybe you've got your phone on you and you've got an iHeart app or Spotify or whatever it might be. And you look us up, Supertalk 99.7 WT. And I encourage you to go ahead and get to your app store and download our app which I believe is robust, dependable, and there for you. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You can also watch the proceedings for you masochists in the listening audience on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. It is Super Talk TV. And every day, Bell K is asked the question, will you participate in Super Talk TV? And every day he tells me no. No. Which is why we call him Headless Bell. But he does title the episodes, and today's episode 537 is entitled. Matt Murphy was once beaten by a computer at chess. But it was no match for him at the gun range. <laughs> that's true. Every every bit of that's true. I, I'm sad to say, I was schooled by. How did you know that? I dude, I, just because you don't tell me something doesn't mean I don't have oh, ways yeah. to find out. Yeah, yeah I'm sure, Green Snake. <laughs> it's twelve eighteen. Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief is in Franklin. Within the sound of my voice, well worth the drive. Do not let a short trip from Nashville or Goodlettsville or Hermitage or Mount Joe, wherever you might be, that short drive is going to be well worth it when you get pain-free. Thank you to the Dr. Gill Center. For less than 50 bucks, $49 to be precise, they're going to take you through a complete examination. Uh, they have a team of doctors ready to help you. Chiropractic care is their specialty, but they do more than that. They do soft tissue as well. It's time to get pain-free. Don't rely on pills. So many people do that, and it's unfortunate. Don't rely on shots. That's a step worth Worse than pills, and uh, your reliance there is is just untenable. It's unsustainable. And then there's surgeries, which are fraught with peril. Should be your last option. Let's get pain free naturally. Uh, back pain, neck pain, knee pain, hip pain, elbow pain, all can be treated with no needles and no downtime at the Dr. Gill Center. They've been helping people get back to a pain free life for well over thirty years. The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief want to talk to you. Six one five. 882-4838. 615-882-4838. Call the Dr. Gill Center today.
As you have undoubtedly heard, as Matt has been discussing, the body of Riley Strain has been recovered. We will hear from Metro Police Chief John Drake. Also, the U.S. House has passed a spending package to avert a partial government shutdown. We'll tell you about that. That's all coming up at 1230 on Super Talk 99.7 WTF. Thank you much, Mr. Jay Harper. We'll tell you about a um, an event happening, not this weekend, but next weekend. Very excited about this possible uh, uh, opportunity for you to enjoy enjoy uh, some of the amenities in and around Nashville. We'll tell you more about that at 1235 this afternoon, getting away from the bad news. Um, Dan Mandis has written me in, has written in and says um, uh, that, Bell, you're wrong. Dan Mandis, your boss and mine, has written a note. Would you like to know what it says? What I would like to know is why he didn't text you instead of me. No, no, he texted me for good reason, because it, rightly so, this is the chain of command, Bell. And the boss is alerting the host that our executive producer has made an egregious error. Come on, man. Oh, well, you you know. just, in the first segment of the show, you, you said that Trump lost the election. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. I'm not here to play to your fantasy, fantasy sir, so just, you can deal with it. Trump. Doesn't change the fact Trump. that you, doesn't Come change, the, does not change the fact that you didn't mention the election in the first segment. Well, that's true. That's true. I should bring up the controversy. Let the audience decide. Uh, Twelve twenty-four. Super Talk ninety-nine-seven WTN. Um, just mentioned by Jay Harper, and good to have Jay in the newsroom back there in the twelve o'clock hour. The Libertarian lunch. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, representative from Georgia, has now filed. I mean, it, it is a dog. Look, I'm out, man. Y'all, y'all just y'all do what y'all need to do. It. DC is broken. They are ridiculous. They cannot, they are addicted to money, Republicans and Democrats alike. And I'm all for it. I'm all for the camp. Burn the, burn it down. Burn it to the ground. You almost said a potty word. There. I did. I almost did. Burn it to the ground. Is, is Y'all want a new uh, speaker? Get a new speaker. I don't care. Is the single, uh, is the single member rule still in yes. place? Yes. So they've got to vote on this. Yes. <laughs> doesn't it make you laugh it's hilarious it's just so stupid y'all have got like what a one or two vote majority one now because is, dude is out the oh, door because uh what's his name chip Roy. no it's not chip roy it's the uh ken buck yeah ken buck left out of colorado so and i don't blame them for being upset and andy ogles was on dan mandis's nashville morning news this morning and you've been hearing the clip in the news department he was upset as well, and I get it. I don't understand, and I uh, I hear you, Republicans. Like, we only have a one-vote majority. and we, we have been hearing that for so long. It is time to do something different. And if this is what we have to do that's different, okay. Okay. Because as long as I have been on radio for 24 years now, I've heard the same same song and dance with Republicans regarding our debt. Well, if we just have more people, we can do something about it. <laughs> I mean, if we just, Matt, if we just had a few more votes, we could we could stop this overspending. And then they get their votes and they overspend. They just overspend on things that they like. You know, they, they dump billions and or trillions of dollars in our United States military, for example. And I'm not against military spending, but the military is not a sacred cow when it comes to our national debt, nor it should it be. Just and and you, you you can't corral somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene and help her understand. I mean, if there's a need to understand what's going on, I get both sides of it, and I don't even care anymore because one side says, "Well, we don't have enough votes, and the election's coming up, and you know, with the election on the horizon, we have to spend all of this money." You know. What do you want us to do? Shut the government down? Yeah, maybe. I'd kind of like that to happen. I actually I don't I would love it. that. I would prefer that. I don't, it, 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 so they're spending money. They're going against their core convictions. If you are a conservative and you believe that we overspend, we have $34 trillion in debt right now, and you're putting us more in debt. We add a trillion dollars to the national debt every 100 days. If you call yourself a conservative, don't come at me telling me, well, we have to do this in order to win the election in November. Then conservatism is dead. Conservative or small-minded government is dead. 
And they literally just passed a budget yesterday that did nothing to address spending cuts or overspending or any of that. 4200 wants to know, how is Johnson better than McCarthy, you bunch of Gates lovers? One, I'm not a Gates lover. I, I have nothing for nor against Mark Gates. I don't look at this as personality contests. I don't know any of these people, truly. I, I, I base my judgment on them on how they act. And wh what I'm telling you is, if, if your argument to me for passage of a $1.2 trillion spending package that doesn't even cover the full year, it just gets us to the end of the fiscal year in October. If you're, if you're telling me that you had to do that in order to not lose an election, then we've already lost the country. America is over. If you're saying that you have to overspend by a trillion dollars every 100 days in order to win votes, if you can't make the case that we need to stop the overspending to the American people, then what are we even doing? What are we even doing? And so I don't agree with what Marjorie Taylor Greene did necessarily, but I sure as hell don't agree with this $1.1 trillion spending package. By the way, Bill, would you do me a favor? Probably. Would you tell our upcoming guests that I'll be much nicer when they get in here? Matt says to let you know that he'll be much nicer when you guys are in the room with him. I won't yell and scream about the national debt. He won't yell and scream about the national debt. I just don't want to scare them off. He'll, he will ask a lot of history questions about the hermitage. Andrew, ja Andrew Jackson balanced the budget. Andrew Jackson balanced the budget. Andrew Jackson was frugal. Have you been to the hermitage? I have not. Oh, come on, Bill. Come on. How long you been here, buddy? I've been on a couple of occasions. Andrew Jackson was so frugal, he would he refused to have marble in his home. Ask them if this is true. He she wouldn't have she, marble. She said it's definitively true. And it's painted. They painted it to look like marble. So he's a cheapo. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll talk about that coming up. It'd be up nice if we had a cheapo president for once. It would be nice to have a frugal government. For once in our life. I mean, he did some bad things. I mean, you know, the Indian Removal Act and all that. But whatever. Whatever. Uh, Julie is uh, up real quick in Franklin to, um, this is just a horrible, a horrible end. Or, and not an end to the family. Because the family, I know that they're suffering. But uh, she wanted to talk about Riley Strain. Hey, Julie, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Hey, usually I agree with you on everything. But I think you're a little bit off bubble Something can be done All right. because of this situation. So he only had one drink at the bar, supposedly, right? That's what they're reporting. That's what the bar says. But Right? But then they ejected him. His friends were there, but they had to settle their bar cab. You know what? The bouncer could have said, hey, buddy, you stand right here while your friends settle their bar cabs. They did not need to turn him out by himself out into what happened. He had friends there, but they had to settle their bar cab. They should have been responsible to say, hey, the friend, the here. friend the I, I don't I've not heard from the friends. I've, I've heard that 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 scuttlebutt that they but they never went for him. Like, right, they didn't. They what? didn't. They didn't. They didn't settle the bar tab and then go looking for him and couldn't find they him. They did. That's what I read. They did. They where did you? Him. Where did you read that, Julie? Uh, well, it was a report on Facebook, of course. You know, okay. in my news feed. But here's the thing: if you got somebody who's drunk, and or maybe he was drugged, we don't know, and they're by themselves, and and you are not going to serve them again, you say here. Per Where the law, by the way, the friends? law the law prevents bars from serving individuals that are visibly impaired. So right, our government right. I, our I, government I, puts that restriction on the business. No, no, I get that. I get right. that. But a responsible person would say, Hey, bouncer, come here. This person can't be served again. See if he has any buddies to take him home. Because he Man. is impaired. Well, okay. And I and I feel you. And and you're making you're making Julie, just a, you're making the very argument though my wife has made to me, right? That the bar has some level of responsibility if they are no longer going to serve them 
and a customer is violating the rules of conduct within the facility on Lower Broadway, where they serve hundreds of thousands of people, I mean, on a monthly basis or whatever it is. So if that bar, if you're, we're going to tell every bar down there that not only are they responsible to not serve intoxicated or impaired people, that they now have a responsibility to make sure that they get home safely? Not home safely, but if they have a friend that connect them with that friend that is there. And if they don't have a friend, you well, know what? But we may- can call. We, You know, I mean, my, our kids drive for Uber. You know, they drive intoxicated people home all the time. Um, Julie, I, help, I mean, I, I help, think you're help. I think you're 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 working this out for yourself. I mean, I no, think I'm you not. are. No, I'm not. This kid, this kid. Was He's not a kid, obviously. ma'am. He was not a kid, ma'am. He's a 22 year old grown man. Well, I'm 58. So well, but he was not. A, he was a grown man with grown man responsibilities. And he may have been drugged. Well, he I mean, I under- look, they only I feel them, so bad. I feel so bad that he's drink. gone. I feel I do. I mean, I know, and, and I don't they, want anybody to think that I don't. I'm not trying to be cold. I'm not. I'm not saying the bar is responsible. They only served him one drink. They obviously did not overserve him. Right. You know. But what I'm saying is, if you've got somebody in your facility that is obviously impaired and they are not making good choices, just ask. Do you have friends? Can you stay here? We'll, well connect you with your friends. Why are we? Why are we them. putting? The, the, he had an interaction with the police afterwards, right. and the police. Did, why are we not blaming the police for not doing something? Well, because the policeman reported that he did not seem at that point. Impaired. Well, but but the bar, but, I'm Julie, come on now. The bar's supposed to know, but, they, but the police but don't. They, come on. No, no. But the bar reported he was impaired. That's why they kicked him out. The policeman said he was not impaired when he had the encounter with him. The the bar said. So you want you want the bar to you want the bar to realize. Well, Julie, I love you. Thank you for. I mean, I've got a. I don't mean to suspend the call based on the nature of the call. I'm just four minutes late. Um, Thank you and God bless you and I appreciate you. We we just will disagree on where the bar's responsibility lies here. We agree on the tragic maker of the circumstances. And I appreciate your passion and I appreciate you listening and I appreciate your perspective. I really, really do. I just, I, I completely disagree that the bar is in, in any way responsible for what a grown man does after they tell him he has to leave. Um, now we want, I mean, responsible from a legal perspective. It's 1235. We're going to shift gears. We'll get back to this. I promise you a lot of people have thoughts on this. We'll get back to it in the one and two o'clock hours. But in a moment, we're going to talk about some good things happening in the city of Nashville right after this on Super Talk. It is 1235, and I'm Jay Harper with your top stories. Uh, As you've been hearing, the body of 22-year-old University of Missouri student Riley Strain has been recovered two weeks to the day that he went missing after a night out with his fraternity. Barge workers on the Cumberland River made the discovery in the water near 61st Avenue in West Nashville earlier today. Metro Police Chief John Drake says there is no evidence to suggest foul play at this point, and they have reports that with Strain's height and weight, he would surface between 14 and 20 days after the incident. In fact, our search teams was going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and then search from this point further down. Uh, So uh, we were in the right spot. An autopsy could be completed as soon as today. In our nation's capital, House passage of a $1.2 trillion spending bill that would avoid a partial government shutdown tonight has sparked calls for the ouster of House Speaker Mike Johnson. Here's ABC News' Stephen Portnoy reporting. The measure passed with the support of most House Democrats, while most Republicans voted against it. And now Georgia's Marjorie Taylor Greene says the Speaker has crossed a line. This is a Democrat budget, and it was passed by Mike Johnson. Greene says she's not yet decided when or whether she'll demand a vote, but her resolution to oust Speaker Johnson at least amounts to a warning shot. In response, Johnson's office says he'll listen to the concerns of members, but he's focused on governing. That is the latest news. A changing weather forecast is next. I'm Jay Harper, WTN News.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN, Matt Murphy and you. It is 1242. We, we'll get back to the, the O'Reilly Strange story. And I, I want to reiterate that I, I appreciate Julie, and I hope that you're still listening, Julie, and I hope that you're not upset at me. I, I appreciate your passion uh, because my wife shares that passion, uh, and she shares the belief that something needs to be done. But we'll get back into that in just a moment. I want to talk about good things happening in the city of Nashville. And I'm joined by Mackenzie and Andy, and I've learned so many things about names and and pronunciations and whatnot over the last two or three minutes that I've had the opportunity to speak with them. Andy is with uh, the Hermitage and uh, Mackenzie is with uh, uh, Nelson's Greenbrier. And they join us in studio to talk about an event that's happening not this weekend, but I think next weekend. Is that right, ladies? Yep. Yeah, Saturday, April 6th. Hey, Andy. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> hey, Mackenzie. Hello. Uh, uh, well, thank you guys for coming in. Thank you for stopping by. By the way, Mackenzie Bell said that um, um, what you were asking about earlier She's got some downstairs, just for you. Mm -hmm. All right. What's going on? What, uh, what, how easy talk to me about this part. Talk person. to me about this partnership that's happening at the Hermitage. Andy, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. Yeah. So Andrew Jackson's Hermitage has teamed up with the Tennessee Whiskey Trail for the third time to bring sip of history back to our grounds. So it's a it's a whiskey festival. Is what it is. It's happening Saturday, April sixth, and we have more than twenty five distilleries, including Nelson's Greenbrier, who will be there to give samples and talk about their product and have a really good time. There's an incredible. Uh, I mean, obviously, many of us and many folks listening to. The show they love uh, a nice whiskey, bourbon or whiskey. Um, I don't know how many of them know the history, and the history is so intermeshed with the making of spirits. And you were telling me, Mackenzie, that uh, Nelson's Greenbrier got its start back in the 1800s. It did, yeah. So it was originally opened in 1860, and Charles Nelson. Um, took over operations of the distillery after selling what they were making out of his grocery store down on what is today Second Avenue. Um, so 1870, he takes over, he acquires a patent that allowed him to streamline the distillation process, increase productivity, and by 1885, he was the largest operating distillery in the state of Tennessee. Nice. And so that kind of got, you were you were telling me some of the history of this, that kind of, that was stymied a little bit in the early 1900s. Most of us might be aware, but you know, there was a little thing called prohibition, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of put a, put a dent in the whiskey production. <laughs> uh, but there, there, I've been running, and I was at. So, is Nelson's response? I mean, I mentioned this. The we were at Bell Mead. My wife and I went to Bell Mead, mm -hmm. and we bought some of your product at the gift shop. I think at Bell Mead because the Bell Mead label is that affiliated with you? It is. So, um, kind of to get back into the history of everything. Um, and bring it bring it into our current history when Charlie and Andy, who are the great, great, great grandsons of the original owners, um, went to reopen the distillery. They, of course, had to have a product to sell uh, until their whiskey could be ready. And for that reason, a lot of distilleries will do a vodka or a gin because it doesn't have to be aged. It can go straight into the bottle off the right. still. And so they instead were aware of the connection to the Bell Mead property mm -hmm. and how they used to have a distillery there. We were talking about how they had all the horse races and everything. So they had that there for their clients who would come, look at the horses, all that kind of stuff. And their distillery burnt down, which um, used to, and of course still today, means that they could no longer make or sell their whiskey. So they had all of these barrels of whiskey aging uh, a lot of those were in Charles Nelson, our founders' warehouses. And so they were able to buy all of those barrels from them. And then Charles Nelson went on to bottle and sell them. So cool. Charlie and Andy chose to use that label and partner with a third-party distillery to put out the original Bell Mead, which has now evolved. We've tweaked the recipe a little bit. And now we are making Nelson Brothers, which is going to be very, very similar, but just tweaked it, fine-tuned it a little bit, and a new, new beautiful label on it. What, um, what, what? was the impetus behind doing this at the Hermitage, at Andrew Jackson's Hermitage? I'm glad you asked me, because this is my baby. This is the ninth time we've had this event, and this used to literally be a $5 ticket and one distillery. And so we started it spring of 2019, and so I've had the opportunity to work on this, to grow it, and to see what it has become. And it's it's just so exciting to me. I think the best thing that we did was partner with the Tennessee Whiskey Trail. I get to meet amazing people like Mackenzie and learn more. And I like to say, and I think people at the Hermitage will agree with me, that history and whiskey just go better together. That's true. 
I like I like them both, but when you put them together, when you put them together, it's just and, magic. And Jackson had a had a still on the property, right. so um, you know what it allows us to do is bring people in. They get to see our site. Tickets include um, admission to the site, so they can come before the event starts and learn all about the Hermitage, learn more about Jackson, and then stay for three hours and drink whiskey. Well, the ticket price, I mean the it, the Hermitage itself is worth the ticket price, Thank you. without any of the whiskey. Uh, but you put those two things together, and I can't imagine that you're not going to just fill the place with with folks that are interested in a little bit of both and learning about a little bit of both. Because you're right, it, I'm I'm, a, I'm I kind of am a student, right? And so I, I nerd out on this stuff. And America's attitude about spirits, the it, I mean, just like almost any other subject, the ebbs and flows, and the level of acceptance back in the day, back in Jackson's day. Uh, and how differently it was viewed back then. Uh, and then we go through the temperance movement, and it was very, very negatively viewed, particularly in the South. And then now it's had this resurgence, this birth of small mom-and-pop distilleries uh, that have their own little unique flavors, their own unique take on what is just such an age-old process. I'm just fascinated with the whole thing. Well, and I, I love it, too, because it gives everybody from the big names, Jack will be there, um, to some of these smaller distilleries that are just getting started, an opportunity to get in front of hundreds of people. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I like it, too. And it's distillers from across the state. So it's not just Nashville-based, but we've got distilleries from west to east Tennessee. I mean, we love our Nelson's Greenbrier. We do love but our But they're Nelson's. one of many that will be out there. Uh, and this is not the reason that I invited you on the show, though. I invited you because of the the nonprofit affiliation. Okay. Because I mean that is I well it is I I, I would have invited you anyway, but it's icing <laughs> on the cake for me. Tell tell me about the nonprofit. Well, yeah, Andrew Jackson's Hermitage is operated by our nonprofit Andrew Jackson Foundation, right. and our whole mission is to preserve, to educate, and to inspire. So obviously, we have been entrusted with an 1,100 acre property, and more than 90 percent of what's on our property and in our collection is original to Jackson and his family. Mm -hmm. And so we have a very important job, and that is to preserve all of those things so that we can continue to learn, we can continue to educate people. Um, and you know, we've got historians on our on our staff that learn something every single day we're continuing to dig we're continuing to do archaeology and learn so that we can tell that story and why it's important i love it uh we were out i don't know three or four months ago and i was fascinated uh, we had been uh to the hermitage um i don't know 15 years ago thereabouts uh when we visited nashville now that we live here we got back out and i love how uh, we have learned over the years to incorporate so many of the positives that happened during that time, along with the negatives, and not shy away from them. For a long time, we wanted to pretend like they didn't exist. Now we incorporate that into the story. Uh, we tell the full story, uh, but you also tell some of the positives that came out of that, some of the negatives that came out of that. And I'm obviously, I'm talking about slavery. Absolutely. I, I mean, and I and I just appreciate the way that that has been blended into the story in a way that makes a lot more sense. Well, I the mean, Hermitage would not be what it is without the story of the enslaved. And right. we talk about it in, in every aspect of every tour that you do. It's in, in our audio tour. It's in the tour through the mansion. We've got two tours designed and designated just for telling that story. Um, and like I said, we're continuing to dig and learn more. So we're going to be able to do even more with those stories. I mean, you found you found the footprints. I think I'm right in this of what, four or five or six, the, with the slave cabins? Footprints, and then even bricks were obviously made on the right. property in a kiln. And so we've got handprints, fingerprints, and some of those bricks that were used to make things like our smokehouse and our kitchen. What can folks expect on the day of the event? You'll have, uh, what, Drinking. a lot of... Act <laughs> <laughs> Lots of whiskey. <laughs> Lots of responsible. I mean, it's, it's weird for me to be the one to say this. A lot of responsible drinking. <laughs> But a lot of drinking, nonetheless. But you'll have, like, games, and there'll we, be a lot of outdoor activities. And lawn whatnot. games. We have live music happening. Um, another thing that I've loved about this event is the Hermitage is dog-friendly. You can bring your dogs to roam the grounds. Uh, and so we have really tapped into a market of people who like whiskey, and they like their pups. And so we blend the two, and it's a dog-friendly event. We've got about eight different dog vendors. We'll have an off-leash dog park. Um, so it's really fun. I think my favorite thing from last year, though, was the couple that arrived with their tickets in hand. All these distillers are set up, ready to serve them. And they said, we're here for the dog event. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Those are my people. <laughs> whatever, whatever gets them in the door. <laughs> so, yeah, so you've got whiskey, history, and dogs. I mean, and cookies. And, and cookies. cookies. And cookies. What do we we got? are partnering with Literary Flower. So I think a few distilleries are doing this. Um, but we in particular 
are pairing our blackberry bourbon lemonade with their Cookie of Oz, which is a like fruity, pebble, funfetti cookie. And they have a few other ones that they'll be partnering with um, for other cocktails. It's called A Sip of History at Andrew Jackson's Hermitage. Give me some of the dates, Andy. Tell me what uh, where people can go, what they need to do to get tickets to sure, this Sure, they can go to my all-new website, which just launched two weeks ago, thehermitage.com. Should be right there on the homepage, Sip of History. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, 7th President, because we're posting new and amazing things, partnering, like featuring some of our partners with that. Um, it's an $85 ticket, unless you're a Hermitage member. This is a great opportunity, Matt, if you and your wife are not members. Become members of the Hermitage, and your I'm membership helps to support our mission. I am in. But you also get discounted tickets to everything. Hey, and it's Andrew Jackson's, I mean, I'm looking at the website right now. It's his 257th birthday. It was last Friday. Or la Well, yeah, 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 around. But we're, we're celebrating We'll it. celebrate it now. Yeah. Uh, it, it's... It, the Hermitage, and I know y'all say Andrew Jackson's Hermitage almost every time because there's so many different Hermitage things going We're around. We're the original. But you're right. I, I, Is there another, I mean, maybe Mount Vernon? I don't know that there's another presidential property that has been preserved in the manner that we have right in our backyards. And I would encourage, like, I, I'm not trying to call them out, uh, but Bell Kay, how long have you lived here? <laughs> Off and on since I was five. I'm just telling you, if you, and he's never been. Look at Andy's face. <laughs> Look at her face. Let me see the left hand. <laughs> Wait, what's a what? Oh, wow. I'm not going if that's, she's married. That's so bad. You're so, you're, dude, you're so wrong. Andy, tell him to chew him away. You need to come to the Hermitage. I tell, there you, you go. I tell people this. It is presidential history. It's right here in our backyard. Love them, hate them, whatever. It's part of our American history, the nation that we live in, and it's right here. Well, and and I think, and and you know, I have a lot of Native American history, so I am the one that should be predisposed not to like Andrew Jackson. But I, I think Andrew Jackson is one of he's an epitome of America in as much as he is complex. He was so good and positive in so many ways. He was so negative in so many ways. He's a, a very very complex historical figure, uh, and that's just that's our country. You know, it's not monolithic. It's not just black and white. So well, he's the only president that has an era named after him. The Jacksonian era was a pivotal time between the Revolutionary and the Civil Wars. So what other president has another time frame named after that? You walked through this door and you said, I'm not the historian, and you're just dropping knowledge bombs on me. Don't tell my work that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one more time, thehermitage.com? Correct. Sip of history, April 6th. $85. We can get some Nelson's Greenbrier out there. Absolutely. Excited about that. And I'm, I'm assuming that Nelson's is available at most of our package stores around, Absolutely. around town. Absolutely. Absolutely. And our distillery is in Marathon Village, so right outside of downtown. So right here in the heart of Nashville. And we did just open back in this fall our uh, brand new. We just renovated in that old building. And we have a brand new bar and restaurant, new uh, tour facilities and everything. It's beautiful. You can just do some tastings, have some food, oh, yeah. do little tours, do that kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. Love it. All of the above. Love it. Love it. People do you have a website? Come out so that they can come hang out with Mackenzie and me. That's exact. Bell, you in? What? That's, that's a yes. I have to deal that's with it. Yes. I have to deal with this every day. Every day. Attitude. I like them more than you, though. Looking forward uh, to it. Most, most people do. Uh, Andy McKenzie, thank you guys. Thank you for having for us. For stopping by. It's, a, it's a, a little note of fun and a sea of bad news. And we'll get back to the bad news in just a moment. It's 12.55 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.
Good afternoon. It's three minutes past 1 p.m. I'm Jay Harper with your top stories. We've got a partly sunny sky, 73 degrees. We'll have a changing forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Metro police have confirmed earlier this morning. I'm sure you have heard, but if not, the body of Riley Strain has been recovered from the Cumberland River in West Nashville. Here's Police Chief John Drake. Workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they uh, they look routinely. It's just happened countless times before. And as they moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that, they removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain. The location where the young man was found is about eight miles from downtown, which is where he was last known to be seen two weeks ago tonight. Police at this point still suspect no foul play. An autopsy is pending. Riley Strain was only 22 years of age and went missing after a night on Lower Broadway with his fraternity. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene has introduced a motion to remove House Speaker Mike Johnson. The so-called motion to vacate is the same maneuver that Republicans use to oust former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. And it was introduced the same day the House passed a $1.2 trillion spending bill to avoid a partial government shutdown. While speaking to reporters today on Capitol Hill... Marjorie Taylor Greene said Johnson has really angered members of his own party. I'm not the only one. I have support on this from others in my conference. And, and it's not, I'm not introducing this to throw the House into chaos. Committees will continue doing their work. Investigations will continue. Congress has until 12.01 a.m. tomorrow to pass the measure and keep the government running. That is the latest news. Weather's on the way. I'm Jay Harper, WTN News. And I don't. Sorry, I opened my microphone earlier and I said something that I wasn't supposed to say. Anyway, um, I, I, I do want to say about this. Uh, Tennessee Men's Clinic is a wonderful sponsor of the Matt Murphy Show. Absolutely love them. Absolutely love what they're doing for men's health in this community. And I love talking about them. And when I was first asked to talk about Tennessee Men's Clinic, there was a little bit of trepidation. Hey, do you want to broach this subject? I said, absolutely, I do. I mean, because men don't get behind their health as they should men don't deal with health issues like we should we i I call it whistling past the graveyard it's a phrase that my grandpa used to use where we pretend like something's not going on and it really is going on well at the tennessee men's clinic they're going to face some of those issues head on no shame in this game whatever it might be if you're low energy if you're a lack of energy if you don't know why get to the tennessee men's clinic and let them find out if you've had some issues some bedroom related issues get to the tennessee men's clinic and let's figure this out. Let's not ignore it. Let's address it head on and deal with it. Most men that go to the Tennessee Men's Clinic and find their wonderful relief, 
They say, I wish I'd have done this two years ago. I wish I'd have done this five years ago. Don't be that guy. Go ahead and make the call and schedule the appointment. Two locations to serve you. One's in Cool Springs and the other in Midtown Nashville for 10 plus years. They've been serving the men of Middle Tennessee. TennesseeMensClinic.com, TennesseeMensClinic.com or call today 615-208-9090. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Matt Murphy and you, thank you for being around with us. It's 109. We'll get to Friday coming up in moments. Uh, you know, Bell K just said something. Oh, to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> oh, to be. I, I remember what you just said. And I disagree with it. I think you've got a, a rather fetching personality. By the way, for those of you looking it up, and I do this all the time, we just had the ladies of the Hermitage on, uh, well, Andy from the Hermitage, and then there was Mackenzie from Nelson's Greenbrier. Uh, the Hermitage.com does work for me, um, and the Hermitage, it, it's spelled H-E-R-M-I-T-A-G-E. -E. I don't know why I transpose the A and the I all the time, but I do. I don't know if you're with me on that, but it's thehermitage.com where you can find out more about the sip of history. Uh, the tickets are, um, some of you are asking, I think she said $85 per, but it gets you samples of the whiskey and, and access to the grounds and access to the facility and access to the mansion and all of those things. So, um, And it goes to uh, a good cause, which is preserving the property. There'll be a lot of puppies there. There'll be dogs and their families, music and all of that. So uh, there you go. That's uh, thehermitage.com. Getting to Fry J in a moment. I want to get to Phil real quick in Dixon, and we'll get to Fry J right after that. Phil, what's going on? Hey, Matt, I just wanted to respond to Julie earlier. Um, in a sad situation, you know, everybody lets their emotions get the best of them, and they always want to start pointing the fingers at the weapon, not the individual. The weapon meaning the bar. And when if, if somebody was day drinking all day long at numerous bars, one bar can't be held responsible for serving somebody one beer. And if, and if he was removed from the bar, it's easy to go to a beer girl at one of the beer barrels and just point to a beer and, and order it without them knowing he's intoxicated. Well, then if a bouncer sees him stumbling, he gets kicked out. Well, where he made a mistake was when he got kicked out, he walked off. And he could have stood there on the sidewalk and waited for his friends. Mm -hmm. Walking off, if nobody's been downtown lately, there's thousands of people. You could walk across his shoulders of people on the uh, sidewalk. So if, if, if you don't have a, a good battery signal and you get lost with your friends, you'll never find them downtown. Well, and a lot of circumstances, and thank you for the call, Phil, a lot of circumstances went into that. We'll get more of your response and conversation with it um, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we've got Fry J on the way in seconds. Uh, and I know a lot of you want to respond to Julie's call and other aspects of this situation. It's very emotional, obviously. And a lot of things went wrong. Uh, sadly, um, for whatever reason, I've heard that his friends were paying the ticket. You know, initially we heard that he went through the back door. He didn't. He went through the front. And we've heard a lot of different speculation about what went down and what didn't go down. I've never been able to confirm that his buddies say that they were leaving, they were paying the ticket. We know that they didn't report the situation until like 1 o'clock the next day. Um, downtown can be crazy. The concept of requiring a bar to make sure that you have safe passage back to your place of residence or your hotel is, is absurd. Uh, it's absurd in terms of, I mean, if, if you have been downtown to Lower Broadway on a Friday or Saturday night, I think you know that there are a lot of people that are overserved, despite it being against the law. One way or the other, we'll get back to that conversation coming up in moments. Right now, it's 12 minutes after the hour of 1 o'clock, and it is time, ladies and germs, for Friday for the love. Only happens once a week. <laughs> Don't. Bell was thinking about his new girlfriend, Andy. <laughs> they were both pretty hot. Okay. Your wife's I, listening. I'll tell you, I, 
I, I'm I'm not committing one way or another to a response to that. I know who's not hot, and it's Jay St. Clair. I'm sure some people think he is, but I don't. Uh, Jay St. Clair is my best friend. He is my lawyer, my life consultant, and my gambling buddy, and he joins us on Friday. Hey, Jay, how are you? Hey, Mark. I'm good. If I were any better, I would be Mrs. Beast. Shoot. What you talking about? I bet she runs your house. Uh, yes, she does, Jay. You know, uh, we our neighbors were replacing their fence. And so for the last couple of days, you know, we share their fence with that side right. of our property. And for the last couple of days, uh, Mrs. Ooh. Beasley has been had personal attention when she had to go out and do her business uh, because, uh-huh. boy, Munson would just hang around. But right. Mrs. Beasley, if she oh. has the opportunity, oh. she's gone. She's she's squirrel hunting squirrel hunting (laughs) and so she has um she's been uh particularly interested in her leash over the last couple of days and so now that the fence is done she's still going to the leash going hey hey buddy you wanna you wanna get that leash (laughs) it's good it's good they are they learn so quick well jay it's good to have you on there's there's lots to get into and i am excited about talking to you about this next um, this next subject, and and it we've m- discussed at great length this case in New York, which you have so rightly over over the years. I've learned to listen to you. I spit the bit for about ten years, and then I started listening. <laughs> <laughs> and when I started listening, I started learning things. And you said from the beginning that right. the 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 key factor in this case is that Donald Trump was running for president of the United States. Absolutely. Yeah. And I believe that all of that is coming to fruition with this this deal requiring him to bond at what five, 454 million dollars this judgment against him. Right. So just before I dive into some of the particulars Give me your take on where we are. And, and and apparently, this is the law in New York that before he appeals the case, he has to present this money or this whatever it is. I mean, talk, talk to me about this. Uh, you know, it's actually the law pretty much everywhere in the United States, man. I would be surprised if, that, if there's any jurisdiction that doesn't have that law. So here's the way that works. Uh, you file a lawsuit and and you win. You get a judgment. Let's say that you're in a car wreck. So or no, well, even worse, somebody uh, wrecks your motorcycle, uh, and and you sue them and you win. And I'd say that motorcycle's worth twenty eight thousand four hundred seventy three dollars, mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. After you blacked it out, <laughs> and so now you. It's, <laughs> you, you now have a piece of paper. It's called a judgment. That where somebody owes you $28,473. Well, that's not self-executing, right? I mean, all you have is a piece of paper. Think of it as like a promissory note. They they owe you that money. Um, well, they can write you a check, right? And then if they do, that's the end of it. But let's say they don't. Or let's say that they uh, say that they don't have the money. And they say, and I think this was wrong, so I'm going to appeal. Um, and you say, well, okay, but in the meantime, I want my money, right? I've got a judgment. I, I don't trust you to not uh, hide your money or, you know, squirrel it away somewhere. Because right as of right now, you owe me $28,437. He says, well, I'm going to appeal. I said, well, okay, you're gonna, you can appeal. But by law, in every jurisdiction I'm familiar with, uh, Matt, if you appeal, you have to post an appeal bond. And I I haven't researched this, but I'll just bet you I'm right about this. This concept is hundreds of years old, Matt. And I bet you the reason for it is that, um, you know, dishonest people, when they have a judgment entered against them, they just put everything in their wife's name, Mm -hmm. right? or they hide the money or whatever. And so it's just a way of making sure that whatever assets the person has now will still be there if they lose their appeal. So, so that part, part of it's very common and, um, you, and, yeah, but not people don't always have to post a bond. 
uh, you remember my case that went to the United States Supreme Court, the judgment that was entered in that case was, I think, $650,000. Uh-huh. We, we never posted a bond. And then the other side never said anything about it. You know, because it, I was representing Goodyear. They're good for the money. And, and so, you know, but it's, it rarely becomes an issue is what I'm trying to say. Well, here it's an issue for, for two reasons. One, it is the leading candidate for president of the United States. And two, and it's not just for the amount of the judgment, it's the amount of judgment plus 20%. Uh, so the, the, the amount is about, well, let's just round it off to $500 million. It's half a billion dollars, man. Okay, there's and, so yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, there's so much to unpack here. I I think they're showing their hand with their insistence because mm-hmm. Trump has said just this morning, I think, or yesterday on on Truth Social right. that he he said, "Look, I've got the money. Yeah, I have right, liquidated. I've got I'm it. it. And he, I'm not going to stiff you. Know, you think I'm going to stiff y'all? No, I'm good for the money. You're saying that that happens." I had lost a lot of cases. In fact, in that led better is the only case I ever remember appealing where I lost. And we didn't post a bond in that case. And no one ever made an issue. Well, but I think they're making an issue, and I think this is tipping their hand. They're making the issue because they want they want to embarrass him. They right. they and and I believe what Trump has said that they want to tie the money up. That right. even if he has the money, he said, I have money that I was planning to use, to spend, to win right. the presidency of the United States of America. And you're right. demanding in the state of New York that I tie that money up with you while I appeal this case that was never before a jury, that right. has never presented a victim. Right. You want me to tie my money up while I'm trying to use it to win the presidency. It We've always known uh, at least I have always believed, I won't say we know, but we, we believe, and I think you do too, that all of this is political. And they're just nakedly demonstrating how it becomes political in the real world, where Donald Trump now can't buy advertisements in the state of Michigan or the state of Tennessee because his money is being held up in New York. I agree with everything you say, Matt. And, and keep in mind, that when the lawsuit was filed, the attorney general up there, she was suing for only two hundred fifty million. Only two hundred fifty million. Well, along the way, I guess somebody said, "Hey, let's really stick it to him. Let's, you know, that's not enough. He'll probably just write a check for that. <laughs> so we better up the ante here a little bit. Let's get it up to five hundred. <laughs> and they did. It's just it's it's twenty first century is not turning out like I thought. Well, it would. I agree, and I defer because you're so brilliant in matters of the law. I defer to your analysis, and I agree. I understand. Here's the here's where things get a little squirrely. So in civil court, there's me. Let's say that you take that. I'm, I'm going to hit you back here. Let's say you take that fancy dancy foreign car that you've got in your garage, right? <laughs> and you run my motorcycle over. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, Jay, I'm going to sue you for that. And so we go to court. There's me suing you, and there's you, and then there's the state involved. There's three parties involved. Well, in this case, there's only two parties involved. Exactly. That's right. It's just Donald Trump and the state. That's right. So I get it where I would, if I won the judgment against you on my motorcycle case, I, I get it that I would go to the state and go, hey, guys, he, this guy, this St. Clair dude, he's going to hide his money, get me my money. He says he's right. going to appeal, but I want my money. Well, right. But it's the state, and the state yeah. decides, okay, well, you're going to have to hold, we're going to have to hold on to that money for Matt. Right. Uh, it, but in this case, the state is deciding that they want their money, and they're going to hold the you understand when without the listen, it's even better than that, man. And the state's not out any money. It's not like he stole five hundred million dollars from right. the state of New York. They're not out anything, man. It, it's even worse. <laughs> it's, it's just it, it's absolutely a windfall, right? I mean, it, it's not like he owes that to the banks, right? That that would feel a little bit differently, right? I mean, if, if the verdict was, well, he cheated the banks, and the banks said, yes, we got cheated, and this is how much we were cheated, well, that feels differently. 
the state of New York has not out anything. He paid every dollar that he borrowed from the banks back with the interest. Every bit of interest. No, it's, it's remarkable. <sighs> All right, hold on a second. Well, if anybody has any thoughts on this or comment on this, you're welcome to join in on the Members Nutrition Super Text Line. What will be the outcome? Who knows? And I'm going to ask Jay this question. It doesn't make, and I don't know that it makes sense to him, but if he didn't have the money and he has to sell off his assets, what happens if he wins on appeal? We'll talk about that in just a moment on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. The Princess of Wales with a shocking announcement. And a missing University of Missouri student's body has been located here in Nashville. Those stories coming up at 1.30 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Mr. Jay Harper. Another Jay, Jay St. Clair in the midst of, well, it's a fry Jay for two different reasons. we got Jay Harper in the newsroom. we got Jay St. Clair on the line. Um, our legal scholar and my best friend. Um, we, have a, we have an investment seminar coming up next month, Bell. An investment <laughs> seminar. 
Well, we're both very excited about it. We're going to do some real estate uh, I'm sorry, development. You have, a, you have a what? We're going to do some real estate development. Golfing. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go to an investment seminar. Gambling. With, a, with another group of, um, there's a lot of group of people. You always meet different just people at the so seminar. dishonest about what you guys do. I don't think, that, Jay, I don't think there's anything incorrect about what I'm saying. Uh, Jay, you're a lawyer. You're not supposed to participate in shenanigans like lying. <laughs> that may be the funniest thing I've ever heard you say, Bill. I get paid to lie. Uh, and he's the only lawyer that I've ever met that will tell you that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you're not getting paid when you're out golfing and... and- gambling so you need to well, call it what it is well jay and i don't bet on the golf course so that's probably the only reason he's not getting paid on the golf course uh because otherwise i'd have to open my wallet every time we finish um so here, here's something that occurred to me jay yeah. now i just looked something up i just used the google machine right and i looked up is the state of new york in debt <laughs> you already know where i'm going do, uh-huh. do you know how much? Five hundred million dollars. No, four hundred eighty-four million. <laughs> no, the as of fiscal year twenty twenty-two, the U state and local government debt in the state of New York amounts to one hundred and sixty-six point five one billion dollars. <laughs> well, they're getting a down payment. How in the world can't I make the argument if I'm Trump's lawyers? Your Honor, if we give this money to New York, what happens if they win on appeal? They'll never get it back. <laughs> well, you're right. Uh, although by law, they'll do it back. And, you know, Trump's so smart, right? I mean, he plays four-dimensional chess. Here's one of the things that I thought. I don't, I'm not predicting this, but this would be funny. Because one of the things they can do, they can seize his property, and then they would hold it for public auction. All right, on the courthouse steps is the way it's really done. Uh-huh. So he says, okay, well, here, here's the deed to mar a Let's have a public auction, and let's see how much it brings. Because this judgment is based on the judge finding it's worth only $18 million. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> That's what it sells for at an open public auction. And then when the price gets to $200 million, uh-huh. you know what he'd do? He'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said there you go now let's put up this golf course over here that you said was only 25 million right and then when the price gets to 300 million dollars he'll buy it so, i mean so that's si- gonna happen. And right but in 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 our dream scenario in the movie version of this he does that and, and he uh in one simultaneous swoop he gets his property back and destroys the entire premise of their case exactly exactly (laughs) (laughs) so how is it that let's say and i don't know i mean you know uh, various billionaires have stepped forward who are not normally accustomed to defending donald trump and they're defending donald trump saying look anybody that thinks he's got 500 million dollars lying around liquid you're insane you know that you would be dumb to do that because you're not making the most of your money well you wouldn't be a billionaire if you got that much sitting around in cash. Right, 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 right. So so the question then is, and I'll ask Jay this in a moment, because the other Jay's got to join in here on the uh, conversation and give us some news headlines. Uh, then that begs the question, if he sells these assets, you can never possibly recoup that. How does that work in the real world? If this is the law around the country, then if I don't have the amount of money that the judgment is against me and I have to sell off my assets, what happens if I win on appeal? We'll ask Jay that question in just a moment. The other Jay, Jay Harper's got headlines. It's 132 on Super Talk. Yes, it is 132. Good afternoon. I'm Jay Harper with your top stories. We're looking at some clouds and 74 degrees here on Music Row. We'll have a complete forecast in a few minutes. In the UK, Princess Kate revealing today she has cancer. The Princess of Wales acknowledging the diagnosis in a new video and saying she is now undergoing preventative chemotherapy. Kate says after undergoing major abdominal surgery back in January, doctors thought her condition was not cancerous, but later tests found out that the uh, cancer was indeed present. 
And Willem and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. The specific type of cancer has not been disclosed, but she's in the early stages of the chemotherapy. Authorities here in Nashville say the body of missing college student Riley Strain was discovered earlier today in the Cumberland River. The young man was last seen alive on March 8th after he was kicked out of a bar owned by country music singer Luke Bryan. Witnesses say Strain, who was in Nashville on a fraternity trip, appeared to leave the bar in the opposite direction of his hotel. His bank card was later found on a river embankment. But during a news conference this morning, police chief John Drake, he says there's no evidence of foul play at this point. We have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his height and weight that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day. That is the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Jay Harper, WTN News. I mention often, you know, with my tongue a little bit in my cheek, the uh, the undercover underpants uh, that you can get. The they're actually called under tech underwear, undercover underwear uh, that you can get at the world famous clock store. It's either um, a, a holster that goes on your undershirt or in your underpants, and they have them at the clock store. Now I joke around about it, but these are very very popular items when people walk into the clock store. You know, Lindy McGill's Glock store has so many different things for you. I mean, obviously. Uh, they sell guns. Uh, they sell handguns for your personal defense or uh, for sports shooting or whatever your purposes might be. Uh, they also sell long guns. They have customized uh, weapons at their disposal. As a matter of fact, uh, right here on the website at GlockStore.com. You go to the website and you'll see the incredible Trump limited edition Glock right there ready for you at the Glock store. Also, Shoot270.com, a separate website dedicated to training after the sale, which is so important. The sale and self-protection and the Second Amendment is one thing. Training and understanding how to use it is another thing. And they have qualified, certified trainers that I've worked with over the years, and I encourage you to do the same. Glockstore.com or Shoot270.com. Stop by this weekend, minutes away from the airport and minutes away from the sound of my voice. Go by Elm Hill Pike to Airlane Drive. It's the Glock Store.
Super Talk 99.7 WT. And normally this would be the time that we get to calls. We're going to get to a few calls and a few questions with our friend Jay St. Clair. It's Fry Jay on the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk 99.7 WT and one of the favorite segments that we do on a weekly basis. Uh, but I want to uh, I want to finish off this conversation about this amazing case in New York, and it just continues to get more amazing. Uh, Jay, I did a bit of research on this last night, and really it wasn't my research. It was the Associated Press's. So this law in the state of New York was passed in 1956. It is known as the repeated fraud statute that they're suing him under. It was designed right. to stop fraudulent businesses. Um, with, yeah, the, the mob. Right, 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 exactly. So do you know how many times since 1956 that a company has been dissolved or that a penalty was imposed that was so grave that the company had to sell off its assets? Would you care to guess? I would say zero. Well, it's actually been 12 times. Okay. And in each case, the reason that it happened, the reason the business was shut down is that they were actively perpetuating the fraud at the time that the case was in court. Right. Yeah. They were Again, and victims. There were victims in court. And, and so the number of times that a victimless crime like this, uh, and I, that's how I would characterize it, has come up over the last 70 years is zero. Uh, and yeah. there's n and and never has have these companies had to have sold physical assets. They just had their businesses shut down because they were fraudulent well, they, business. They, they couldn't do it. Right? I mean, right. They just didn't have any ability, and nobody's going to loan them any money or buy right. them anything. Now this is absolutely sui generis. <laughs> uh, you hey, know Bell, how much put that in your pipe and smoke it. Sui generis, Bell. You know how much I love it when you talk in the Latin. Uh, <laughs> so what happened? Just generally. Let, let's, you know, I, it's impossible to take Trump out of it, but I'm just trying to do that for my own brain. So if in this scenario, right. even if there was a victim, even if there was a third party, we talk about only being two, but even if there were three, if I go to the court and I say, look, you've made this judgment of $40 million. I don't have $40 million on hand. And they say, well, you have to sell all your stuff. Right. What happens if I went on appeal, Jay? Well, you know, I'll, I'll confess to you, I've never been in a case where that happened or have never read about that <laughs> happening, man. Uh, but I, surely, by law, you're due to get that money back. Whether you will is a, an open question. But at that point, you're due back that money. Yeah, it, There's this concept in the law that you paid something by mistake, right? If you pay something by mistake, then the person has to give you the money back. Here really wasn't so much by mistake, but, you know, it's just the right thing to do. And I think that the law would say that. But good luck getting him back. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, man. It is, um, it is fascinating to consider that the government of the state of New York could seize someone's property, could dissolve the property. Right. And then that person went on appeal, and then they don't have any ability to repair the damage that they've done. Well, I mean, you know, the Trump could get an order of saying to the state of New York, pay this money back. I mean, at that point he's owed that money, but I mean, you know, they may, at that point, they may plead poverty and say, well, I'm sorry. We spent it. <laughs> We're going to appeal. <sighs> so to bond. Yeah. yeah no, so it, listen, it's, it's absolutely, it is sui generous, man. I mean, you were talking earlier, how does this normally happen in the real world? Well, the way it normally happens is either the winning party doesn't require a bond, or if they do, you just go get a bond, right? And so no money actually changes hands. They just post a bond in the clerk's office. The bond just says if, uh, you know, the, the appeal is not over, if the case is not overturned on appeal, and if Trump does not pay what he owes, then we, the bonding company, will pay. That's the way a bond works. But see, even then, Trump would have to pay, but normally it's 10%. So if he had got a $500 million bond, he'd have to pay $50 million. But the problem is nobody's going to write a $500 million bond. They may not have the ability to do that because, see, they have to have the cash on hand. If the bonding company, if they issue a bond and it's not a reversal appeal and, and Trump doesn't pay, they have to pay. 
you know, they can go back and get the money from Trump. Well, no company is going to put itself on the hook for five hundred billion. What 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 do you predict? You think Trump will produce the the cash or? No, I mean, no. Here's here's what I believe the outcome is going to be. Either the Court of Appeals could step in and stay the judgment. They absolutely have the power to do that. Or the other thing, and I think this is more likely from some news reports I'm reading, they'll work out a deal where Trump doesn't actually have to put up any cash. He just puts some deeds up, kind of in escrow. Um, and so no actual money will change hands. And and you know and you don't expect that you know you put up a few deeds you know whatever Mar a Lago Trump Tower whatever it might be and uh, right, right. but that doesn't mean that you're going to have to hand them the keys and they exactly. boot you out. No, that's right. No, that's right. And so that's what it looks like to me is where this is probably headed. I'm sure they have a motion on file with the Court of Appeals asking for them to stay the judgment. I mean, they, they may step in. I don't know anything about the New York Court of Appeals. I, well, I know they're elected. <laughs> and I know they're elected by New Yorkers. But, I mean, this is such a stain on the legal system in the state of New York. You're already hearing very, very prominent business people say, well, it, I'm out of New York. I'm not doing business in New York. Well, and, because and, if they can do it to him, they can do it to me. Well, that's right. And, and when you have – there are some liberal minds uh, that take the emotion out of it, uh, you know, that, that set Trump aside for a moment. And they think about the ramifications of the state – bringing charges against individuals. Once again, just want to reiterate, the banks testified in favor of Trump. The banks said, we loaned him the money. We got every bit of our money back. We got all of our interest back. We made money on the loans, and we'd loan the money again. And we do our own internal assessment about the value of these properties. We don't take people at their word when we're loaning them millions of dollars. So right. the, the idea that the state could step in, even in those sets of circumstances, and begin a process that would shut down a business in their state because they don't like their business. Right. I mean, because he's not being Donald Trump's not being accused of doing anything illegal. Right. I'm I, I just it, it is it, it is fascinating to me as a case, even if it weren't Donald Trump's name on it. But it's impossible to say that because if Donald Trump's name weren't attached to this, I don't think any of this would be happening. It is suey. <laughs> Well, sui generis, what does that mean? Well, one off, one of a kind? One of a kind. One of a kind. Uh, Jay, you're one of a kind, and I appreciate you so much. I want to get one question in here. Michael's been holding on. I uh, wanted to ask you a question about uh, disability. Michael, you're on with our good friend, Jay St. Clair. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, coming from the beautiful Sequatchie Valley. All Ooh. right, guys. Hey, Jay. Um, my wife had brain surgery a little while oh, back, Lord. about a year ago, maybe two. And we've been trying to get her some disability. Well, problem is, they say that she doesn't have enough units or credits or whatever she's supposed to have, even though she's paid in all her life. Now, how does that work? I mean, what's the deal? Yeah, are you, you're worth dealing with Social Security, Michael. That's that's who you're applying with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or Ten yeah. Care, whomever. And neither one, she doesn't qualify for either one. And yeah, but you're applying for Social Security disability, right? Yeah, that's what we're trying to. Yes, yes, and that's what yeah. they told her. We didn't have yeah, and so you do have to have worked a certain number of quarters of the year to to be eligible for that. And okay. you feel very strongly that she has worked enough, uh, and they're saying that <laughs> she hadn't. That's an odd kind of mistake for Social Security to make. Uh, have yeah. you actually filed an application with Social Security and it's been turned down? Yeah, she did. She did a while back, and that's how we got yeah. the word about I wish I had a better answer than this, but here's my best advice. When you get to that situation, Michael, you can try to find Social Security yourself, but, man, it's hard. I would get a lawyer who specializes in Social Security disability cases, and there's a bunch yeah. of them around that do that. You can find it on the Internet. It's just that you're at a point where it's in your best interest to get a lawyer that specializes in these kind of matters. All right. Well, that, that's what I put in my notes. I was hoping you weren't going to say, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. I was no, going to write that up. in my notes. But, now, yeah. did, did you I say you are calling from Sequatchie Valley? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen to this station all the time because I'm up on the hill, so I can pick it up all the uh, time. Michael, do you happen to know where Jay St. Clair is from? Yeah, I know. He, I know. That's why I said that. <laughs> yeah, he's from the area. I'm not sure where he's from, but I'm well, above Dunlap. Dunlap. I was born oh, in right. Dunlap, and my grandmother okay. lived right about halfway between Dunlap and Pieville, a little area that they're known as uh, Lusk. Lusk, or, or, yeah, I lived in Lusk for a little while. I know where it's at. Well, I used to climb. You are in God's country. I love. I used to climb the back of Brockdale Mountain up through there and go yep. on top of uh, Dayton Mountain and haul yep. mountain stone off up there. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's love it, God's yeah. country, Michael. Michael, know y'all got to go. Thank yeah, you we do. Answer. Well, look, thank you, and and I hope everything works out for you, Michael. I do appreciate you. Uh, Jay, it's been a fascinating time today. I know we didn't get to many questions on the listener line, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to park all of these members' nutrition super text questions for next week, uh, and we'll get into each of those uh, when we have time available. And I look forward to seeing you next month, buddy. Man, I'm looking forward to it, man. Take care. Have a great weekend, Jay. Thank you, brother. There's Jay St. Clair. That's a good edition of Fry Jay right there, breaking down the Trump case. Obviously, we're following the Raleigh Strain story. Uh, we've been covering that since it broke this morning around 9.30, 9.45. Uh, we're getting uh, some other reports about some other news coming in. Uh, one, uh, Marjorie Taylor, uh, uh, a couple of things, three, four breaking news stories simultaneously. Uh, Riley Strain has been found. Sadly, he was found in the Cumberland River. He is deceased. Uh, there's an autopsy ongoing, and we're expecting a report coming up at some point, um, if not today, in the next several days, about whether or not the – Police Chief Drake held a press conference earlier today saying that no evidence of foul play was found on Riley Strain's body. He was still clothed. We did not get any information about whether his wallet was still on him. We know that, obviously, he lost his debit card, which was found on the banks of the Cumberland, <coughs> excuse me, several days ago. Then there's breaking news from overseas. Um, the Princess of Wales um, has announced that she is undergoing cancer chemotherapy. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, royal watchers have been concerned with this Catherine case because she's not been seen in public and she had some sort of abdominal surgery. I've not been following she the has case. Stomach cancer. Is that what is that what they're saying? Yes. So yeah, she had some sort of abdominal surgery. They didn't think it was cancerous, and now they are revealing that it was in fact cancerous. Stomach cancer. Forty two years of age with young children. Just uh, I don't care who you are. Uh, that's bad. And if you're the Princess of Wales, obviously that's going to get a lot more attention. Have you seen the video they released of her talking about? I've seen it. I've not heard it. She she looks really hollow in the, that video. She looks gray. Yeah, she looks. Sickly. She's got that ashen uh, look to her. So, uh, I mean, you, you see some of the other pictures. I'm looking at it right now, as a matter of fact, on my screen. You see these photos of her. She's a beautiful woman. I mean, and, and still a beautiful woman. But she has this rosy complexion, um, vibrant uh, smile on her face. The video that they posted, she she looks gray. That's all. The only way I her can, eyes look sunken. Yeah, that's the only way I can say it. So, um, your thoughts go out to her, and obviously, uh, a lot of folks, Angliophiles, I think they're called, um, are of interest to that. Now, that's breaking story number two. Breaking story number three: Marjorie Taylor Greene has announced that she is filing a motion to remove Speaker Mike Johnson, who's only been in the post for four months. The House Speaker won the speakership, or I guess a little more than four months now. It's, well, what, October or November? So won the speakership back then after they ousted Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy no longer in the Congress because he's just fed up. So Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, enough is not good enough or whatever. I mean, whatever your position on it, this is it's a dog and pony show leading to the November elections is what it is. And I'm here for the chaos. And then item number four, item number four. Representative Mike Gallagher, we are told, has announced that he's resigning from Congress. Like, immediately resigning from Congress. He is a, uh, Mike Gallagher is a United States representative. Uh, currently from, from Wisconsin, obviously. And he is now saying that he will resign early. House Republicans have already lost Ken Buck of Colorado. <clears throat> and now Gallagher is announcing that he's leaving. And 
what I he's leaving on April 19th. And what I'm being taught, I'm trying to crunch the numbers here. And I don't do this as well as some. I think Brian Wilson is the best at it on the radio station and crunching these numbers. But I think that still, we've been saying one, but I think it was two or three. I think this leaves the Republicans with a one vote majority in the House of Representatives. And they want to they wanna have another speaker vote. Marjorie Taylor Greene does. Just un... I, I don't know what to say about it. She's about determined to make sure it's Hakeem Jeffries. <laughs> you know, what, what they ought to do is just hand the keys over to the Democrats and let them run the show yes. for the next several months. So that the Democrats at least have to take the blame for it. Drive it right into the ground. Just drive then... the crap into the ground and be done with it. Hell, if I were a Republican, I'd vote for it at this point. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, Instead of, I don't know. There are no good human beings in Washington, D.C. It doesn't feel like. It's 155 on Super Talk.
Good afternoon. It's two minutes past 2 p.m. I'm Jay Harper with your top stories. We've got 75 degrees and the clouds are moving in. We'll have that weekend forecast in just a couple of moments. After weeks and weeks of silence from palace officials, it's now been disclosed that the Princess of Wales is being treated for cancer. Here's more from Tom Rivers in London. In a released video statement, Kate says the cancer was discovered after her successful abdominal surgery in January. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. It's been tough on the family for the past couple of weeks, she says, but she adds, for others out there facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. Back in our nation's capital, a motion to remove Mike Johnson as House Speaker was introduced today by Georgia's Marjorie Taylor Greene after a $1.2 trillion spending package to avoid a partial government shutdown passed. Tennessee's 5th District Congressman Andy Ogles tells WTN's Nashville's Morning News he's not a big fan of the bill. This is a monstrosity. It's an abomination. And quite frankly, everybody should be offended by it. If you have an ounce of conservatism in your bone, if you love the republic, you should be offended by this piece of legislation. Johnson managed to get the bill passed through the House despite the objections of most Republicans and about two dozen Democrats. It's now on its way to the Senate. Back here in Nashville, the body of 22-year-old University of Missouri student Riley Strain was recovered two weeks to the day earlier this morning when he went missing after a night out with his fraternity. Barge workers on the Cumberland River made the discovery in the water near 61st Avenue in West Nashville. Metro Police Chief John Drake says there's no evidence to suggest foul play at this point. And that even before the barge workers sighted the body, Metro search teams were planning to search this morning in the area where he was eventually located. There's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his height and weight that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to, uh, to find him. An autopsy could be completed as soon as today. That is the latest news. The weather forecast is next. I'm Jay Harper, WTN News.
Doing a little math during the break there while Jay Harper delivered some of the headlines for you. It's our final hour of the Matt Murphy Show, 208 Super Talk 997 WTN. It's a First Amendment Freestyle Friday. And let me tell you something. We've not had a day with breaking news like this in some time. And I tell you the truth. Bell knows. If there's nothing going on and, you know, we're just kind of going over the same, you know, that's when I make my bones is when there's not a lot going on. But my goodness gracious, there's a lot going on, some good, some bad, and some good and bad. So let me give you the rundown. And we'll get to your calls. Line them up, 615-737-9986. Open phones. It is a First Amendment Freestyle Friday, something that I've been promising for months. We're going to rebrand as a phone it in Friday. Get it? I I no longer believe you. You've been waiting on me. Yes. For, what, a month? Over a month now, yes. Yeah. I know. It's on me. I take full responsibility. By the way, have you ever heard the story about the guy that died from exploding chewing gum? I have not. Will you tell me this? Yes. Okay. Not right now, but I will before the end of the show. Bastard. And I, I, if, if I have one habit that I wish that I could eliminate, it's not paying off my teases. And I am sorry. I sincerely don't mean to do it. I just have, I have 187 things going through my brain. My brain bounces around my head like a box of frogs. And I apologize. I don't mean to do that. You're supposed to tease in our business. Hey, guys, coming up in a minute, we're going to talk about this. And then oftentimes I forget and we get off on something else and people get mad, 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 mad. So, if Bell, you do not tell the story... I hope them. you have a terrible weekend. Well, that's not very nice. Then tell the story. Okay. Exploding chewing gum. Don't let me forget. Guy blew his entire jaw off with chewing gum. Chewing gum. I'm not making any part of that story up. More coming up. All right. Here are the headlines that we know of. Uh, lots of go lots going on in the news. So um, if you have been listening to our radio station for any length of time, or really if you're just tuning in, if you've got your cell phone handy, uh, you've probably heard the news. It's uh, It broke this morning at about 9.30, I guess it was, uh, that a body was found in the Cumberland River. Well, we had another body found in the Cumberland River last week uh, that many thought might be Riley Strain. It turned out not to be the case. And as our good friend Brink Fiddler uh, told us when he was discussing the case with us earlier this week, there are more bodies found in the Cumberland River than we would want to believe. Um, a lot of times these are... Cases that no one ever hears of, they're accidental deaths, they're overdoses, and people fall into the river, whatever. There are more bodies that come out of the Cumberland River than you would think. Today, there was a body found, and sadly, it has been announced by uh, Nashville Metro Police Chief John Drake that it is Riley Strain. Uh, we are sad for his family. Obviously, this brings a tragic end to a two-week search for Riley Strain since he went missing off of Lower Broadway, attempting, we believe, to get back to his hotel, although he went the wrong way. I, I would say this. A lot of people are attempting to try to, quote, do something about this. A lot of folks say, well, we have to do something. I've heard suggestions that the bar should be held responsible for getting people home. We had a caller earlier that felt like that was the case. My wife has expressed as much. I've heard suggestions that we need to fence portions of the Cumberland River near Lower Broadway to prevent drunks from falling into the river. I mean, and I would, I would suggest to you that we need to do nothing except to protect our loved ones, protect the friends around us, notice things that are going on around us, and try to do our best to elevate our civilized society in a kind and good way. In other words, if you see something, say something. And if you see something that you feel like you can be a positive influence over, let's do those things as well. But I would also say this. The most unusual things in our society often get the most coverage. One of the reasons that Riley Strain made national and international news is because it is so unusual. It is not with any degree of regularity that people go missing off of Lower Broadway. It's not with any degree of regularity that people end up in the Cumberland River after a night on the town. And just like every time, Bell, how many times out of 100 are we going to hear about a commercial airliner crashing? 
on the national 1800. news. 1800. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Wrong segment. Uh, you'll get a cursory mention and then it'll go away. Well, no, what I'm saying is this, that when a commercial airliner goes down, that's news. Right, but it's not like, you know, you don't look at and go, oh, my God, that never happens. Well, I mean, it happens, but it's always national news. My point is quite the opposite, that you don't hear about car crashes. No. Because car crashes happen with far more regularity than airline crashes. Airline crashes happen enough, and they are big news stories when they happen because of the unusual nature of these airline crashes. I believe that Riley Strain became a national news story because of the, the unusual nature of it. Yeah, it was he a just lot. seemed to vanish. Yeah, it was a lot of mystery involved. Um, and some have asked, well, you know, when homeless people go missing, we don't get this level of coverage. Well, home, I, I'm homeless sorry to tell people you. sort of start out missing to begin with. Right. And that, I don't mean that disrespectfully. It's a lot. There's a lot more of it happening with a lot more regularity. I was leading all of this to our conversation with Stephanie, who you talked with, right? And told her that we would be discussing this in the tour. Yes. And then she hung up. Yeah. So she's been holding for 40 minutes. And Stephanie, I'm sorry. I, I was going right to you as promised. And uh, and it seems like we lost you. Call us back if you're able, Stephanie. We'd love to talk to you and have your take on the Riley Strain story. A lot of you wanting to call in on the Riley Strain as Jay came on the air. So if you want to jump back on here and give your thoughts on it, Julie felt like the bars needed to do more. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that we need to react in an emotional way. Everyone's sad for his family. Everyone's sad that he's dead, rightly so. But sometimes a series of events lead to death that if one or two or three different things were to happen, it wouldn't have to be so. And hindsight's always twenty twenty in these cases. But I, I just disagree with the idea of making these wholesale fundamental changes about how lower Broadway works or about how the police interact with adults even drunk adults, because of the tragic nature of the circumstances surrounding this. All right, so you've got that. You've got Riley Strain making the announcement. You've got Kate Middleton uh, announcing today uh, that she has cancer, uh, specifically stomach cancer. Um, Kate made the announcement. Uh, this is on the heels of King Charles um, announcing that he has had treatments for cancer. Uh, she has been missing uh, in action, if you will, uh, and it has been noticeable. Then the the photo came out. I think this was, what was it, on Mother's Day? Uh, yeah, it's a Mother's Day in England. And a photo came out of Kate and the kids, and it was Photoshopped. It'd be like, what's up with that? Well, we now know that she's been undergoing chemotherapy for treatment. Obviously, a lot of Angliophiles in the United States of America were, of, were concerned about Kate Middleton, and we now know what's been going on. It's been a shock. The Princess of Wales announcing uh, that they need time, space, and privacy in that situation. That's number two. Number three, Marjorie Taylor Greene has filed a motion to vacate the speaker's chair. So all of this started, just a little backstory. all of this started with, uh, with Kevin McCarthy. And we couldn't figure out a speaker in the new House of Representatives after the 2022 elections. And eventually they landed on Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans had a razor thin majority then. And that majority has gotten even more razor thin now in order to secure the chair. Kevin McCarthy agreed to rules that would allow for one individual to bring up a vote to vacate the chair. It's never been one to my knowledge. There have always been, a, there's always been a greater threshold, uh, but now that threshold is just one and Sadly, and I say sadly, in the aftermath of the passage of a $1.2 billion, billion, trillion, whatever it is. No, trillion, pardon me. <laughs> uh, in the aftermath of the $1.2 trillion federal funding bill uh, to avoid a government shutdown, Marjorie Taylor Greene, disgusted as we expect she was with the vote. Andy Ogles was on Nashville's Morning News this morning expressing his frustration as well. Marjorie Taylor Greene has now accused Mike Johnson of, quote, betraying the confidence of the House GOP by ushering through that $1.2 trillion federal funding bill. Johnson won the gavel in October after McCarthy was ousted by a motion to vacate earlier that month. Greene told reporters after filing the motion, it's more of a warning and a pink slip. There's not a time limit on this. It doesn't have to be forced, but I'm not saying that it won't happen in two weeks or it won't happen. 
I'm not saying that it won't happen in two weeks or it won't happen. So you've got that news where they're demanding another vote in the House of Representatives and then this. In the midst of an election year, in the midst of a presidential campaign, and in the midst of a razor-thin majority in the House of Representatives, another Republican has resigned. And that resignation will happen before the end of his term. The Speaker's office confirms that Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin has announced and informed the Speaker that not only will he not seek re-election in the fall, that he is going to resign his position April 19th. In less than a month, the resignation is on the heels of the resignation of Ken Buck, a Republican from Colorado who's also not seeking re-election. He's resigning from Congress today. So that cuts my math, and I'm leaning on some news reports here, and I'm going to lean on Brian Wilson in less than an hour to give me the math. So, Brian, if you're listening, it's math time. And I know Brian regularly says on his show that math's not his strong suit. We're going to find out. He knows how to count votes, though. He's been up there and done it. So I think the math was 218 to 13, and I'm, I'm thinking that's going to shrink to 217. I think we still have, like, there's still a, a That three. is correct. I looked it up, and that your numbers are correct. So it's 217 to 213 with Gallagher leaving. With Gallagher leaving, that's correct. So they can only afford to lose one vote, apparently? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, well, I don't. If you lose that vote and it goes to the other side, you're still 216 to 214. You can lose two if it's 217 to 213, I think. Math's not my strong suit. <laughs> Gallagher, an Iraq War veteran, 40 years of age, is the chairman of the select committee investigating the Chinese Communist Party. Gallagher, first elected to Congress in 2016, has grown frustrated, he says, with his own party. He was one of three Republicans who voted against the impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro! How long before we have a third party? A viable third party? I wish that some of these fiscal conservatives would get together with the libertarians and resolve some of their war issues and launch a third, a, a, call it something different. Don't call it the libertarian party. Don't call it, Whatever. I'd be real curious how that would work. How many people would break for that? Would you? Would you? Would you? I would. Because these folks ain't getting it done. I don't even care where you land on this Marjorie Taylor Green crap. These folks ain't getting it done. $1.2 trillion? We are overspending. I know that I sound like a broken record, but friends, I mean it when I tell you this will be, this and the southern border will destroy America if we let it. You see the southern border? They're overrunning the Texas National Guard. You want to say that this is anything other than an invasion? And that's going on, too. Whew. A lot to get to. Rick is in Nashville. Hey, Rick. What's going on, man? Hey, Matt. How are you? I'm doing good, Rick. I appreciate your call. Thank you. Well, I, I, I want, I'm hoping you're going to tell me that I'm off my rocker here. And after listening to you for since you've been at 997, I think you're the one talk host that will tell me that. But what I'm asking you is, is there a possibility these these Congress people are resigning due to the fact, if I'm not wrong, the Supreme Court said that Congress was the, had the only right or the only way to tell somebody they couldn't run or could not be elected to an office, that if they, enough of them resign and the Democrats take over, that that will happen before the election. I, I'm not okay. Walk that walk that through one more time. So, if enough Congress people resign out of the Republican Party, the Democrats take over. Uh -huh. They'll they will they will have a deal that says Trump is not eligible to run. I think the Supreme Court said the states did not have a right to keep them off the ballot, but that the only people that could oh, do that yeah, was Congress. I see. So you're so. That would mean that the Republicans are doing this to Trump. Right, which are the never Trumpers. Isn't Buck one of the big never Trumpers? I think he was, yeah. I don't know about Gallagher. And if this, and if this, if this Wisconsin guy, whatever, 
if he voted not to impeach May Elkers, most likely he's a never Trump. No, this is a good this is a good theory. I, I this this is an interesting theory. So the theory is, as presented by Rick, and I'm not dismissing it, Rick, which might mean bad things here because no, I'm I'm normally the guy who's like, oh come on, Rick, you're crazy. But I don't well, know. That's, that's why I called you. So yeah, so the idea here is that the the Supreme Court has said that Colorado can't kick Trump off the ballot. That that there has to be a declaration in Congress that what Trump did on January 6th amounted to an insurrection, and that is where the 14th Amendment would kick in, right? And that's Correct. what you're talking about. And so the yes, I, what your theory is, and this is the first time I've heard this, that some never-Trumpers have decided to resign to give over the majority to the Democrats so that they can super jiffy quick pass something that would prevent Donald Trump from running as a Republican. All right. All right, I'm looking into this further, Rick. This is, um, I'm not dismissing that at all. And and, and it, it it is, we'll call it a conspiracy theory right now. Um, but all they would need is what? Three more resignations? Yeah. And the Democrats take over. And I promise you this, Rick, I this is, this I know, and thank you for the call. If the Democrats take over, there's nothing, nothing that they will not do to prevent Trump from being the nominee. Nothing. They do not give a damn about the Constitution. They don't give a damn about your vote. There is nothing that they won't do. Ooh. That, that, that's a scary scenario, but one that might just be worth consideration hey our good friend steve abramowitz is on the line i see that Lindsay's on the line as well you could be on the line too abramowitz give us a rundown of what happened at the rally earlier this week we'll do that next on super talk 99.7 wtm You know, avoid the rain over the weekend. I mean, I know that it's going to be hit or miss, according to the weather forecast. And get out to Savory Spice. Maybe between ball games, if that's what you happen to be doing, you can head on out to Savory Spice and cook you up something delicious. Whether it's, I don't know, on the grill. Maybe you're breaking out the grill because it's springtime now. Or uh, perhaps you're cooking something inside, a stew of some sort. I don't know what you're doing. But I know this. Whatever you're doing, if you're not putting in spices from Savory Spice, I think you're doing it wrong. Because they simply have superior spices to the other guys. They've got spices that uh, the grocery stores don't have. And some of these stores that have, you know, spices. I mean, what are you doing? Don't you buy a spice from some knockoff store. I don't want to name names here, but you know the ones I'm talking about. When you can go to the best, up your food game. You're not a kid anymore. You're not eating SpaghettiOs. Up your food game, well, upping your spice game. Up your spice game with whatever you eat with savory spice. Two locations to serve you. l l Market on Charlotte Pike. The other's in Franklin just off the square. They have salts. They have blends. They have exotic spices, world spices, international spices. Anything you can imagine, they've got it at Savory Spice, plus great gifts. Savory Spice. Tell them I sent you to the one and only Holly and David and Savory Spice.
After prolonged silence, it's now been disclosed that the Princess of Wales is being treated for cancer. We'll have the latest. In light of the tragedy involving Riley Strain, can the city do more to make downtown safer? The mayor weighs in. We'll have those stories at 2.30 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you much, Mr. Jay Harper. He's back in the newsroom. Bell K's behind the glass, making sure that everything that comes out of our speaker sounds as good as possible. My name is Matt Murphy. I'm the host of the proceedings from noon until 3 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You can find me online at Matt Murphy Show on any various platform of your choosing. I'm Matt Murphy on Facebook. Other than that, it's at Matt Murphy Show Instagram. And I'm on the X machine more, more often than anything else. And you're invited to be a part of our social media life in that regard. Real quick, Bell, I'm going to go ahead because I don't have time to get to Steve. I want I don't want to I don't want to rush him because we got news coming up. You, you want me to give you the exploding chewing gum story? Because I have people you on better the super- give it to me, bring it. I have people doubting me. They say there's no such thing as exploding chewing gum. This is a lie. This is an urban legend. Well, that's not true. They used to sell it on the back covers of comic books. Oh, contraire. In December of 2009, a 25-year-old chemistry... You don't get this anywhere else, by the way. Anywhere else on the radio. In December of 2009, a 25-year-old chemistry student by the name of Vladimir Likonos out of the Ukraine died due to exploding chewing gum. Vladimir had an unusual practice of enhancing the sour taste of his chewing gum by dipping it in a citric acid powder. So he wanted to enhance the sour taste. He liked it really sour. And the way to do that is through citric acid. Well, authorities determined that he accidentally used something other than citric acid that was determined to be as potent as TNT. It is speculated that Vlad, but we, they couldn't ask him because he had no jaw. The um, it's speculated that Vladimir inadvertently mistook citric acid for the explosive powder, and he coated his gum with explosive powder before chewing it. The explosion was triggered by the reaction of the explosive powder with Vladimir's saliva or the pressure exerted when he chewed the gum, the exploded, the explosion resulted in the immediate and inadvertent removal of his jaw. And for those wondering, he gone. And there you go. There's some news that Jay Harper won't tell you about. Super Talk 99.7 WT. Quick, let me spit out this gum. It's uh, 2.32, and I'm Jay Harper with your top stories. We've got 75 degrees, mostly cloudy in Music City. Your weekend forecast is upcoming. In the U.K., Princess Catherine has been diagnosed with cancer. The prince is saying in a video that she's in the early stages of preventative chemotherapy treatment, which she started back in February. The princess saying tests followed her abdominal surgery in January revealed the cancer. But at the time of her surgery, doctors thought her condition was non-cancerous. Here's ABC News' Maggie Rooley, who is standing outside Buckingham Palace. She's been in relatively good health. Uh, she's athletic. I think, again, hearing this news, the country is going to need time to process this. Right now, it's, it's really flooring people. The palace has not revealed what type of cancer Princess Kate is fighting. The body of missing Mizzou student Riley Strain was recovered from the Cumberland River early this morning. Shortly after Metro Nashville police announced the recovery, Mayor Freddie O'Connell of Nashville held his weekly roundtable and discussed what could come from this, from this situation to make Nashville safer. I've walked this stretch for decades, um, and I could certainly imagine there being uh, barriers that made it harder to get from the sidewalk into the, um, the areas of growth that are right there along the riverbank. Strain's body was found 14 days to the day that he was last seen in downtown Nashville. That is the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Jay Harper, WTN News.
You know, USS, United Structural Systems, started their business in 1994 with a simple premise. They understand that foundation issues can cause major, major problems with a home. Waterproofing issues can cause major problems with a home. They wanted to be your home experts in that regard, and they certainly are. Over 30 years and over 25,000 satisfied customers later, they are the go-to company in Middle Tennessee, the go-to company in Southern Kentucky for everything you need for foundation repair, waterproofing, and concrete leveling. We talk about the first two aspects of this quite a bit. The concrete leveling aspect, here's the deal. Um, there was a time when if you had cracks, when you had concrete settling in different ways, if you had erosion problems underneath your concrete that caused that settling, the really the only answer was to dig up the entire bit of the concrete and repack it and redo the concrete. Now you can you can use this incredible poly lift system that can lift that concrete back into place. You can walk on it almost immediately. You can drive on it within an hour. And you don't have to repair the concrete. You don't have to replace the concrete. It's going to save you thousands of dollars. Go to USSTN.com to find out more. That's USSTN.com or give them a call today. USS, United Structural Systems, 615-488-7855. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Uh, Bell K was just telling me during the break there. There's another breaking news story out of Russia, apparently involving gunmen breaking into a concert hall and killing people in the concert hall and setting it on fire. Do I have that correct? Yeah, I'm trying. It's uh, I'm trying to look up the city. It was in here real quick. It's just man, oh man. Russian uh, 40. people. I know I'm looking at it right now. 40 people are reported dead in Moscow at a concert hall in an attack. Uh, that happened. It's night there, obviously. It's 10.38 p.m. in Moscow, Russia. And we now have a report. Oh, my goodness. 40 people, and the concert hall is actively on fire. This death toll might go up. Uh, the fire in this building is incredible. It's almost 11 o'clock. It was at Crocus City Hall. Um, 40 people dead in this concert hall attack. And you can see the active fire is ongoing as we speak. I'm looking up on monitor number one here in the studio's 
uh, here in uh, Music City. Oh, my goodness gracious. So you got that going on. There's a lot uh, happening on a very, very busy news Friday. Steve Abramowitz was a part of a rally earlier in the week, and he calls in to talk about that, amongst other things. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, hey, Matt, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm just, I'm watching some of this crazy breaking news happening all over the joint, man. I know, I was going to talk about the, the chaos at our rally, and it's nothing compared to what's going on in Russia right now, or Kyle Rittenhouse over at the University of Memphis. People yeah. are losing their stuff. Well, right, because we, we can't have civil, I mean, it doesn't appear, and, and you witnessed it, Earlier in the week, outside of the steps of the or on the steps of the state capitol in Nashville, Kyle Rittenhouse over in Memphis witnessed it this week. It seems that we have an inability, and it's not us. It's not conservatives, libertarians, liberals don't have an ability to have any sort of civil discourse anymore. No, no, they scream and yell because they can't win at the ballot box. You know, your last caller, uh, Rick, he was so close, he almost had it. Can I tell you what I think is going to happen? Talk to me. So RFK Jr. is probably going to pull off enough votes from the Electoral College to get to 270 for Biden. That throws the election into the House to select the president. And Speaker Hakeem Jeffries from Brooklyn, election denier and anti-Semite, ensures it's not going to be Trump for the never Trumpers. No tricky bills actually needed to be passed. And that's why these... uh, Rhinos and these fake Republicans and these kind of traitors to the party are bailing early. No one gets to fill that new seat till November. They don't even get a special election. It's just empty. Right. What do you um, do? You know what the off the top of your head, what the percentages have to be in order to trigger the House making that determination? I don't. I don't. Anyone doesn't. If anyone doesn't get to two seventy, okay. So yeah, it's just a. So really. We're talking about Kennedy maybe picking off one or two states. Yeah, can just keep Biden below 270, and Trump can't get to 270 either, mm-hmm. then boom. You've got yourself a, a un, unfinished election, and the House gets to choose. That's the rules. That's already in the Constitution. You know, I remember when we were— It's like Game of Thrones, you know? Yeah, I remember when we were kids, and, and, and may, maybe some of you remember the same— you know, dynamic that I remember seeing stories on the nightly news. Dan Rather, what my grandmother watched Dan Rather. She hated him, but she watched him every night. I mean, she hate watched him. So CBS Evening News, and you would see these, um, you know, banana republics pop up in the, you know, African Congo or, or in South America. You would hear stories about militia overtaking uh, a duly elected presidents. You, you, you would see stories Uh, about gangs and gang violence in the streets. And I remember as a kid, Steve, when I was, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, thinking, man, that 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 could never happen here, that that we have such a great nation uh, that we have protected ourselves from that type of lawlessness. And, man, it saddens me. It it really does bother me. Well, yeah, now we're flying them in, 230,000. They just arrived in Miami today from uh, Haiti. You know, these are people who they believe in voodoo, they practice cannibalism, they are thieves, they are crooks, they are not, not all of them, I shouldn't say that, that's terrible to generalize, but there are enough of them as a percentage, when you got 230,000 unvetted unvetted people flying in, you're going to get some bad actors for sure. Um, And by the way, you know how this um, uh, Riley Strain uh, washed up here in the Cumberland? I can remember when I first got to Tennessee, coming from a state like Seattle or Washington where Seattle is, and it was so violent and so gang ridden, so much graffiti, so bad. You had to have your head on a swivel swivel. When I got to Broadway the first time I was thinking like, Hey man, this is Liberty. This is freedom. Everybody's nice. Nothing bad could ever happen. But you forget, no, it's actually a big city in America in 2023 Mm -hmm. at the time. You can't do that. So I don't know what happened to that poor kid. I don't understand why, you know, Lake and Riley, Riley Gaines, Riley Strain are having these news things, but it's not what you're talking about. Not 1970s Napa, California, like I'm from, where you could go out on a bike from sun down, sun up to sundown, and nobody would ever think twice of you because it was a, a safer, less, I don't know, social media kind. No, of- when, we, when we were kids, you got yelled at if you came home early. 
You, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, get back out there. Uh, nowadays, you just you, you can't do it. Well, it's up to us uh, to take it back. And and I know you uh, you were a part of a strong message being sent to our state general assembly to do everything that we can. I, I know that there there's only so much that can be done on the state level, but we need to impress upon our lawmakers that they need to be doing everything in their power uh, to press the federal government to stop the flood of illegal aliens across the zone. And thank you for doing that. I'm glad I appreciate you said that. that because before before I jump, I just want to say, you know, we got a session that is going to end very soon, and there's HB one two four seven one eight seven two two zero seven eight two four three two. We just passed two one two four. That was uh, Rusty Grills, um, you know, uh, Hibachi Barbecue guy. Uh, <laughs> that is a fantastic bill. And so there are things that can be done in the state of Tennessee to protect our borders from all of that outside influence that we're talking about that is not Tennessee values, not American, not patriotic. If we just call our legislators and our Senate companion bills, I don't have those numbers, and say, let's make Tennessee strong and not be like those other 49 states that are doing all the wrong things. You know, they flew them into 41 airports. And didn't tell anybody what airports those were. So the people are here. They're in the streets. They shouldn't be. And crimes are being committed that don't have to be. People are dying like Lake and Riley, rest her soul. We just need our legislatures in Tennessee to do what Senator Haggerty tried to do. He tried to make the census citizens only. Every single Democratic senator voted no on it. Every Republican voted yes. So it failed because they are the majority, unfortunately, but that's the key. All of these illegals are not being counted as citizens in the census. They're just being counted as residents to be in the census, and that's giving the blue cities that are supposed to be losing congressional seats seats again because everyone's moving to Tennessee to get away from that. Um, it's, and that the census is April 12th, so we have to say in Tennessee, if you're going to be in the census, you must be a resident. Mm. Um, before it's too late. Great stuff, Steve. Thank you for inviting me on your on your podcast again, Ten- Mill Creek View, Tennessee podcast. You can find me up there um, amongst notables, and you know, and and you have the ne'er do wells, and that's me. So thank you, <laughs> appreciate that. My pleasure. You have All a great right, weekend. All right, you do too. There's Steve Abramowitz of Mill Creek View, Mill Creek View, Tennessee. Lindsay is next up in Pleasant Acres, talking about Riley Strain. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Matt. Um, my question is, when do you think we're going to hear more about these fraternity friends? It's just so hokey to me. that I mean, how many of them were there? How many does it take to pay a tab? Was there a falling out? How come nobody went with them, with, with Riley, or looked for him? You know, I, I don't know. But I, I know this, and, and I, I don't know what happened. And you don't know what happened, and, and hopefully we'll hear more from them. But I did say this to to my wife, and I, I've said it to others, that guys and girls think differently. And, and I wouldn't think twice if I'm out with, with Bell Kay, and I know that Bell's had a lot to drink. I mean, I understand that it, it looks bad when he stumbles into that post, but he didn't look so bad when he was engaging with that police officer. And I don't know that I would, even if Bell was, you know, a little tossed and he said, I'm going back to the room, I'm going to walk back to my hotel. I don't know that I would feel compelled to walk him back. I know hindsight's 2020, and I know right now we're like, why in the world did they not run after their friend? And rightly so, but I try to put myself in the mindset of somebody that's partying, that's drinking, and your buddy gets kicked out, and he says, I'm just going to go back to the hotel. I agree with you that we need more answers. I agree with you that I want more answers, and we need to know exactly what happened, but I, I don't I can understand why they would think that he could just get back to the hotel and sleep it off. Maybe it is a male and female thing. By the way, nice jacket. Oh, thank you. Appreciate I that. Just, I wonder how many of them there are. I'm I'm curious to find out more. So thanks for my call. Thank you. Did she say nice jacket? I thought she said nice jacket. Are you saying that to me? Do I have a jacket on? I don't think I do. I mean, it's a... It's a Three quarters zip, or quarter zip, or whatever the hell you call it. Uh, I know what I call the next guy that's coming on this radio show, and that's Brian Wilson. He's coming up to tell us what's happening this afternoon. It's not like he doesn't have any news to talk about. Man, oh man, what an incredibly 
busy news day. You've got this fire after a gun attack in Moscow, Russia. You've got the resignation of another Republican narrowing the majority. You've got the call on Speaker Mike Johnson, a motion to vacate by Marjorie Taylor Greene. You've got the, I mean, they're just way, way too much. We'll find out the order in which all of this comes for Brian Wilson coming up in just a moment. It's 249 on Super Talk. All right, friends, Matt Murphy and Defend Systems, you know, boy, oh, boy, we talk about the dangerously developing world and some of the instances that have happened over the last week, two weeks. Uh, it just brings it right here to home, doesn't it? Well, here's what Brink Fiddler's here for. Um, he is an active shooter and physical security expert. Um, and in this dangerously developing world, we need Brink and his team now more than ever. Defend Systems is a life safety and security consultation firm. They're based right here in Middle Tennessee. They help you out. What do they do? They they go to your place of business. They go to your school. They go to your church. Anywhere that people gather, they can help you make sure that your facility is as secure as it should be. They help you understand and your team understand uh, active shooter response, uh, workplace violence prevention, security improvement, uh, emergency and intruder action plans, and rapid response medical, all customized to your facility. In other words, they help you understand what to do in the unlikely event that something should happen to you. It is unlikely that any of this will happen to you. Believe it or not, it is. But it's not zero. And that means hope is not a plan. It's time to get trained with Defend Systems. DefendSystems.com. That's DefendSystems.com. Or 615-236-6484. 236-6484 for Defend Systems.
It's going to be difficult to hear. But as we bring on Brian Wilson, I, I just this this was at the Crocus City Hall earlier t- tonight. It was at night in Moscow. Th- this is video that is coming in. These are terrorists that are sweeping the Crocus City Hall and killing people. And um, and that is going on right now. At least forty dead. Uh, and the videos are now beginning to filter out on social media. Don't be confused. Uh, because we refer to our places of government as city halls. This was called Crocus City Hall, which was an auditorium, a concert hall, a theater. It was a venue for entertainment purposes. As we bring Brian Wilson on to this very sad news coming out of Moscow, Russia, what a, an incredible news day, Brian. Yeah, there's something going on there, and it's not clear what it is. I mean, who would be responsible? Is anybody claiming responsibility? Does this have anything to do with Ukraine? So many questions, right? but at this hour, not many answers. Um Boy, what a what a news day it is! And then, I mean, back at home, here we go with uh, another Republican resigning, and not just saying I'm not running for re-election. I mean, what do you make of this, Brian? I mean, and now well, we're down to what four? I think. Well, I I think that you could make an argument. It, it, it this number constantly is in fluctuation because right. of people who who uh, you know check out, people who uh, uh, are you know reelected, etc. But as I understand it, we're down to a one vote margin now or will be very soonly uh, very soon in the house of representatives and then uh, on top of that you have marjorie taylor green who says well we need to we need to think about changing the speaker of the house now she says that is more of a a warning than a pink slip but uh, here we go again do we need this of course the sad news about riley strain having been uh, found uh in the river his body has been recovered uh and uh, we have uh sad news out of uh, out of london and that Kate Middleton apparently has mm. cancer. So a lot of things to cover here today, including the, content, the continually outrageous situation on the southern border. Uh, you're not going to believe some of the sound I have to play on wow. that today. Well, there you go. There's Brian Wilson coming up for four full hours. A lot of bad news, but hopefully he'll put a little uh, light in your life as well on this Friday afternoon. Right after Jay Harper's newscast. And Jay Harper's newscast is happening right now. Keep it right here on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, folks. We'll talk to you on Monday. Until then, hug your loved ones. So long.